hello and welcome to my channel so again let's <coughs> i found a document sat khandagma sat khandagma so why sat khandagma states of jiva so what i understand i will tell you what i think is and why we are into this the rigvedas the the vedas were quite easy to understand but this is highly complicated and <coughs> in the digambara sect of jainism uh, <coughs> this text is of utmost importance <laughs> why it is of utmost importance is that ultimately a person who is a digambara jain who is a monk who has renunciated everything in search of moksha if he does not find moksha all the years of penance all the year all the decades a lifetime of penance would go futile he will again get stuck in uh, various births and rebirths he will not reach the supreme land of bliss where there will be no further births or rebirths so i believe that is the goal of this document and that is why they say that only the digambara monks who have renunciated everything who are at the highest state must only read it so what i understand is that there is our human body and uh, there is a and there is our soul and the soul has various karmic effects it is as if the soul <coughs> has dust laid on it it's dirty and a dirty soul cannot enter heaven hence <coughs> purification of the soul elimination of the karmic effects elimination of the doshas of this soul is necessary so that the soul can finally transcend into that land into that supreme fifth dimension i would state of course this time and this uh, doc this text may say any other name but for the sake of my understanding which we have defined the fifth dimension where the gods reside in lotus posture or uh, like the heaven but why fifth dimension is because we are differentiating between various entities in the various dimensions like the fifth dimension or the fourth dimension or our third dimension or the lower dimensions so the various entities which are in various dimensions so there is a process to reach that dimension they can only interact with entities of a particular dimension or one dimension below and other dimension entities they cannot see so that is what i personally believe and with this what they are trying to achieve is <clears throat> they through apagare through ahimsa and through a parigraha they are reaching a say, state of transcendence but only this much is not enough only reaching 
a state of anekanta vada will not help the soul to lose its dust because from the past actions a lot of dust has settled on the soul so unless and until that dust is settled from the soul the soul becomes shining with glory it cannot ascend to the heavens so this text would be defining the various karmic states the various states the effect of karmas on this soul <clears throat> so a learned person can do what is necessary to shake off the dust of the negative particles and then he can finally take on the take on the particles of the new dimension and once he merges <coughs> with that new dimension where his karmic effects on the soul have all fallen off then only he will be recognized and he will be able to enter that dimension so uh, but this knowledge could be wrong also so let's look a bit deeper into this what they have written <coughs> there were some seers like dharasin dikambara tradition in kindra gujarat who knew parts of several canons seeing the loss of the sting he thought of transmitting this knowledge to some capable seers who could redact it he thus wrote a letter containing his apprehensions <coughs> let me take some they corrected the incantations and mastered them as required when they reported their accomplishments to dharasena he was immensely satisfied this practice indicates that the signs of intent incantations was in vogue even during the early christian era in india they are saying is that <coughs> when these monks would be doing the incantations they would find out the benefits they would realize that their soul which had the karmic dust was getting settled and they were emerging from it and ascending upwards in the heavens so let's uh, go over uh, a little bit lower in this document tertiary species it has also described the bondable karmic species in different spiritual stages along with the duration of these <coughs> species <coughs> the karmic experience has been describing through many discussion doors like substantivity location time mode and i need to read it you know from couple of places because the text is extremely big we cannot go over the entire text 
uh, here but we can grasp some ideas आई बो टू आचार्य पुष्प दंता हुज टीचिंग्स कैन रूट आउट द डी मेरिट्स और मिजरीज ऑफ कॉमन मैन हिज टीचिंग आर लाइक द सन विच डिस्ट्रॉय द डार्कनेस ऑफ फॉल्स स्टैंड पॉइंट्स ही हैज स्वेप्ट ऑल दी थॉन्ट्स फ्रॉम दी पाथ कंप्लीट एंड फाइनल इमेंसिपेशन ऑफ सोल ही इज द लीडर ऑफ ग्रुप ऑफ सीजियस ही हैज सब्जुकेटेड हिज सेंसेस फॉर एवर I bow to Acharya Bhutbali, who is worshipped by all periapetic beings, especially Bhutas. He has conquered the ills of the body, like old age, disease, etc., by his ascetic-like ringlets of hairs. He has destroyed the reach of God of Love. He has expanded the sphere of celibacy by his purified knowledge. so these are nothing but great uh, the greatest of the greatest sages jain uh, digambara monks uh, who are recognized at uh, at excelling so through an entire life of renunciation penance <clears throat> devoted to spirituality they have achieved the greatest of the greatest things which other uh, which other digambaras are uh, bowing to so they are revering uh revering uh, these two acharyas who have written this document so we can understand like how great uh shatkhand dogma is <coughs> i bow to the rihantas who have overcome the inner enemies like attachment and delusion have destroyed all types of wheels or obstructions to knowledge and cognition and have become omniscient have annihilated <coughs> all obstructions of karmas <coughs> and uh, receive highest regards <coughs> from all the living beings so but we i want to you know dig deep into this text okay so this is a beautiful line that we see the karmic shedding of persons studying uh is it scripture censure is is directly observable by those having clairvoyance and telepathic knowledge the traditional direct motive is to receive regards from pupils and their pupils the indirect motive has two classes worldly prosperity and spiritual bliss
let's uh, <coughs> go deeper <coughs> Okay, let's see what there is a, a enunciation of existence, investigation of yoga. The gross come mixed bodily activity is the effort causing the movement or motion in the space points of the jiva due to the energy produced by the karmic and gross body aggregates. Okay, this is something that uh, you are never ever going to find uh, in any other religion the gross come mixed is the effort causing the movement or motion in the space points of the jiva so jiva what they mean is i believe the soul due to the energy produced by the karmic and uh, gross body aggregates the gross means extensive and large the body arising due to extension and largeness is known as gross body it is not correct to say that the gross body is extensive The space points of the <coughs> or innumerable times those of protein but the space points of the material of luminous body are infinite times the communication body. There are many synonyms for the gross body. The gross body arises from grossness the gross activity is caused so here we are learning about a type of a body in I think in the spiritual domain The term uh, the communication is defined as a medium through which the jiva intakes or assimilates fine materials or thoughts. The activity due to this communication body is termed as communication bodily activity. This aphorism thus means that the space points of different types of landforms are in an increasing order while the space occupancy is in the decreasing order. <coughs> The jivas are material eternally due to karmic bondings. There is therefore no contradiction in this association of the material living units with another material body. Due to this there is also no contradiction its recombination with gross body aggregates.
the death is the total and not partial dissociation between the body and the jiva as it is seen that there is no death even when the living units contract in their throat area alone similarly there is transgression with the jivas whose hands have been cut but they do not die <clears throat> the body of the saint in the sixth spiritual stage which intakes or assimilates fine materials <coughs> to acquire meaning from the om ni science when it goes to him for clarifying his doubts is called <coughs> communication body <coughs> the karmas or action particles are karmic body it means the eight types of karmic aggregates form karmic body alternatively karmic body is that which is caused by karmas this karmic body is a species of the physique making karma <clears throat> so basically whatever here is written is in a different realm the different realm of you can see a different dimension uh, all of this text is not referring to the physical body but it's referring to the jiva states or the soul states the various soul states the various soul types how how they can how the person on this path can understand how he can get a celestial body where he'll be able to enter a particular dimension it's a very complicated document and perhaps whoever understood it completely the various types of soul states which are there what is the karmic influence how to reduce that karmic influence a person who completely understood that he tried to convey the meaning in text and possibly he is not able to convey it properly because it does not relate to the physical domain in our physical world it relates to a spiritual world and what is the need the need is that a being wants to attain moksha he cannot attain moksha because when he dies 
his soul is in an unclean state there is lot of karmic dust settled on it so uh, with that the door of that supreme bliss dimension will not open otherwise what would happen the moment a person dies <coughs> and if he has that level of uh, soul then he will immediately enter in that land and that does not mean that just by following the pillars of uh, jainism which is a parigraha ahimsa they will enter chantations <coughs> also is needed <coughs> recitation of prayers <coughs> seeking of forgiveness blessings of the gods a lot of things will be needed before the soul can attain the utmost state so where he can he will be able to directly open his eyes into that dimension so in this let's read read uh, forward i'm still taking some cup drops because <clears throat> i have some a little bit of in food in section for which i am taking antibiotic and tomorrow is going to be, be the fifth day and um, every day we hear like the covid strain new covid strain is coming and it could be coming <coughs> like in two or three months, and I do not know like what's going to happen then. Okay, let's move on forward, and I'm really liking this text, and uh, it's making uh, sense. The communication body activity and mixed communication body activity occurs in prodigious restrained ones. <coughs> oh really excuse me for the thoughts let me drink some water now <coughs> how the restrained ones are called accomplished ones it is due to the possession of communication body accomplishment or due to the possession of protein prosian body accomplishment in the first alternative there is a flaw of reciprocal dependence one cannot call the jiva is accomplished until it acquires communication body similarly it cannot have communication body accomplishment until it has attained accomplishments similarly the second alternative is also not correct as there can be no accomplishment over another accomplishment that is there cannot be two accomplishments simultaneously <coughs> moreover if it is not accepted there should also be telepathic knowledge possessed by the communication accomplished ones as there is no peculiarity in this accomplishment however it is not so as it contradicts the canons the communication body is produced through restraint respect to excellence in restraint
now what they say there is no defect due to the second alternative we do not agree that there is no accomplishment along with another accomplishment there is no rule that a jiva cannot have many accomplishments simultaneously as all the seven accomplishments intelligence procreation austerity potency medication elixir accommodation are simultaneously found in the chief disciples <coughs> karmic body activity is possessed by the jivas during transmigratory motion and omniscience under solar space point projections so what i read what i understand uh, through my little mind is that when we are present in this physical space <coughs> uh then we are kind of projecting a jivan space if we move our location also the location of that jiva in space is going to move the jiva the soul the jiva or the soul can develop accomplishments it can have many accomplishments it can develop communication body i do not exactly know what that is <coughs> mm, need to take a little bit of water more mm. the karmic body is the origin from which all other bodies are formed the yoga or activity is defined as the vibratory motion of the space points of living units due to the mental vocal or bodily very forms <coughs> the karmic body activity results from the activity of the karmic body it is found in the jivas under transmigratory motion uh i do not think there is ever going to be any task text ever which is going to go in so much detail <coughs> about the various states of the soul about the accomplishments of the soul no such document can come because we do not have a uh, people who have achieved so much who have achieved such transcendence who have achieved such illumination in their minds in their brains who have spent their entire life uh, lifetimes uh, practicing their <clears throat> and perfecting their jiva and this is what sets uh, jainism the digambara sect of uh, jainism so special i believe amongst uh, all the religions in the world and i believe that <coughs> people from all religions should at least once read like uh, how much jainism has written about such states and i <coughs> can vouch for the authenticity that whatever is being uh, described is true it is not some man man made fiction because 
we have seen lot of digambara saints and in jainism there are lot of learned saints who are preaching not fallacies not superstitions whatever they are saying is based on observation because they are spending a lifetime doing activities which will improve their soul so let's go deeper <coughs> the canon state there are four types of motions of the jivas while they are trans migrating from one destiny to other destiny is it destination or destiny they are aero linear motion hand throw motion flow shaped two curve motion kai multi curve motion the first one is straight or unbending motion the rest are curved motions so i do not know like what this means <coughs> the jivas under right karmic destruction are called under projection how there could be simultaneous states of the knower and the knowable in this case of omniscient under projection states of jiva okay so this is getting more and more complex as i am uh going deeper so now i need to go to a random page and see what is there in it <coughs> the general mind is invariably concomitant among the four categories of mind which is true false etc etc as mentioned in the the mental activity is defined defined as the vibrational activity produced due to the energy caused by mind so whatever mental activity is happening it's vibrational activity so which other which other religion could tell you this one sentence <coughs> i really doubt any of the religions ever any of the religions which has ever come before or any of the religions which will ever come in future no one can state this line the general speech is invariably concomitant among all of its four types as mentioned uh, mm, <coughs> need to drink more water what is really bad <coughs> need to take more cup drop maybe i should take some cup syrup now <coughs> a random page now below because it's getting very complex <coughs> those jivas are called a passion or passion less ones who have no passions like anger etc which are obstructive to self 
others and both which cause bonding of karmas and lead to non restraint of senses and who are devoid of internal and external impurities of different types <coughs> these saints have dormant passions it is with respect that they are said to have passion the rest of the meaning is easy Okay, so now they are describing the spiritual stages. So it's already how much? It's already like over forty minutes. And really, excuse me for all this coughing and all. Uh, but I have liked this so much that even despite. Uh, you know this infection i thought okay i must uh, read the love of this document made me read despite me being down with cough uh, and my throat being sore <coughs> uh, so let us dig deeper down and uh, then maybe i'll keep reading this if i find some more points and i will share with you the restrained ones have spiritual stages beginning from the stage of non vigilantly restrained up to the stage of omniscience without activity like what does it mean is it like uh, they are able to dream and then they reach a place where they are not able to dream they do not see any visions and all so this i do not know let's <clears throat> uh, how could it be generalistic the destruction comes subsidence of the sense of sight obscuring karma is a regular cause for the grasp of an object only with a color it does not receive any specific color of the object out of many colors like blue etc the sense of sight destruction comes subsidence of the sense of sight grasp is equally any specially colored object so here what they are saying
the jivas with various colorations the jivas with white coloration jivas with red coloration jivas with yellow coloration the characteristics of jivas with gray coloration black oral coloration full of anger hostile fighting jivas with black oral coloration highly sleeping highly cheating highly lustful for riches and grains these are characteristics of the blue coloration so an extremely complex document uh, a very complex text not document of course very very vast so the explanation itself is so complicated so what would be the complexity of the actual text or the actual knowledge so what this means is there are various dimensions uh so there is a physical dimension in which we are there there is a spiritual dimension where when we are moving about in our world we are going from one point to another our jiva or soul is also going in another place in the space dimension <clears throat> what is happening in the physical dimension so that is impacting uh, the soul in the spiritual dimension so that the soul is very much real there are various entities in that dimension there are gods in a particular dimension the beings from there are many dimensions the beings from one dimension cannot look at beings from uh two levels above or something like that so uh, uh an entity who is living in a human body cannot actually see the beings in the fifth dimension he must go in the fourth dimension when his body has ceased to exist when he transcends in the fourth dimension then he will rise up to the fifth dimension or if someone is uh, someone has a teacher he he can directly enter the fifth dimension if his soul has achieved the perfection if his soul has uh, uh got some accomplishment if it has got the, the karmic influences or some particles i do not understand those but <coughs> the jivas residing in the second to seventh hells are not destructional right faith while in the fourth stage of non restrained right faith however they have remaining two types of righteousness 
by other destruction right faith beings destroying the seven species of karmas this is the nature of things where the righteousness obscuring seven karmic subspecies are not destroyed in the second etc as it is because there are no genas tirika the subhuman beings are wrong faith emerging right faith come wrong faith non restrained right faith and restrained and non restrained ones why there is no restraint among the subhuman beings when they renounce food and take after detachment with the body this is because there is no total internal renunciation enunciation of existence investigation of righteousness it is because of the class we are restrained is not possible manusutra mountain and before swayam prabha mountain swayam purmana ocean <laughs> so are these places in this physical dimension or they are places <clears throat> in the spiritual dream i do not know but because this book is a treatise is a great text on the soul then probably like it is referring to some place in some different dimension the celestials beginning from the heavens of sodharma and is the about higher and higher plane residing grevikya celestials are destruction destruction come substantial and substantial right phase ones in the stages of non restrained right phase the celestial beings are observed to be born with all the three types of righteousness in the above heavens secondly the last two types of righteousness are required after their birth in these heaven <coughs> the jivas ascending or descending the subsidential ladder of stages are born in the nudisha and anuttara empyrean planes hence there is no contradiction in having the substantial right with their so i guess i am done with this i have to read when my mind is the sharpest and then maybe discuss a few points with you in the next chapter so with this talk i am going to end and i apologize for my throat issue hopefully it uh, becomes better and in silence i am going to read this document now and uh, hopefully a few points of interest i can uh, share with you thanks a lot for listening to me